Laura Gisla Dottir, welcome to Closer Conversations. I thought we could go back to the first piece of yours that I ever heard, which was Vape for Orchestra, um, which has a rather dark subject matter. Um, it, it's about the Syrian attacks in the Tokyo subway in 1995, terrorist attacks. Um, and I was wondering about that rather dark subject matter um, and what it was that brought you to, to write a piece about that. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, it was quite simple because when I, when I learned of the attacks, I, I just thought it was they, they were sort of fascinating yeah. <laughs> in a sense. And uh, mainly um, uh, what I thought was maybe the most uh, interesting was that um, when, when the victims were uh, interviewed, the, most of them like shared the same experiences, although obviously they hadn't spoken or together or didn't even know each other. Uh, but it was a very common factor that most of them uh, tried to find uh, excuses for like when they saw people like starting to drop down uh, on the train, um, they would like think, ah, oh, a flu has hit us or something like uh, everything like yeah, trying to find excuses or, or or explanations for what was happening, and none none of none of them seemed to be violent. Yeah. So none of, no one seemed to jump to the conclusion of like of what I read at least uh, that uh, that it uh, that it maybe had something to do with like, with, like some actual a violence or yes. yeah, terrorist yeah. attack. Yeah. I suppose that's. Uh... A human thing to try and make sense of yeah exactly exactly and i just thought it was uh, really interesting and just to think of the just the i thought maybe the aftermath was probably more uh, interesting in a sense than like the actual attack because i mean the actual attack is just pure violence yeah. and there's maybe nothing new about that yeah. and then the the impulse to transform that experience into an orchestral work. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, what were you thinking of with... Uh, yeah, uh, you, you've got five sections, which I, I suppose refer to the five uh, attackers, the five terrorists. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, in which... Because it's not it's not so much programmatic music, um, or or is it? Uh, it is actually <laughs> uh, uh, because um, I remember. Uh, I mean, it was uh, almost five years ago when I when I wrote it. But um, I I comp uh, compressed the whole uh, because I don't remember actually how long the attack took in general. But I everything like every attack happens correctly like when it's compressed into like 12 minutes or something okay. with the pieces yeah. so in that sense it's programmatic but what i maybe was more, that was maybe more of, of a frame a time structure for myself yeah, yeah. but uh, then i was maybe more interested in just trying to uh, get into that atmosphere sound wise so both uh, figuratively and and liter literally sort of so like what could how do you create a sort of suffocating atmosphere and <clears throat> a bit of a yeah an uncomfortable atmosphere I guess yeah, sound wise and yeah so you know it can also get just like uh, which techniques uh, for, for every uh, instrument which are the ones that work as contributors yeah. to that. Yeah, there's quite a. It's also a large orchestra, so you've got quite dense textures. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, which can feel quite overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, also difficult to penetrate. Uh, it's like a, a big texture that kind of also keeps you on the outside a little bit. Um, yeah. When you're sitting in the audience, at least as I remember it. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then uh, if we jump all the way from vape to your latest album, Hiba, mm -hmm. which is a, a basic, almost a solo album, um, 
with with double bass, you yourself performing on double bass, but also with the help of electronics uh, filling out the texture. Um, you also have you know, a very textural uh, sound world, um, and also with some quite dark elements, uh, mm. with, especially with some of the tracks even touching on things like suicide. Um, and uh, yeah, again, that's, yeah, it's been I've been curious about um, where that that sort of uh, those dark subject matters, um, yeah, what brings you to to return to them again and again, mm. um, <laughs> because you don't seem like a dark person at all. <laughs> you're, you're a very friendly, uh, open <laughs> together person, and uh, yeah, it, yeah. Mm. Um. I, I don't know actually. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have an answer, but I think uh, I think maybe I'm not scared of dark matters, yeah. so I don't think of them maybe as something negative necessarily. Yeah. So. Yeah, like in, with uh, the interview you had about the album, uh, the Heba album, you talked about yeah this kind of period of winter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, where, where nature shuts down and, and where people can also shut down mm -hmm. um, and that yeah, the reference that suicide is even almost of like a very long closing down um, from the person which is yeah definitely a, a more positive view on it than not so much uh, normally we it, normally they are very destructive uh, associations that one makes with something like that, mm. a, a violence against mm. a person, mm. against themselves. And this is more like a, you know, a looking for, searching for rest. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think just in general in my work, uh, I am very, you know, I, because nothing has one side. Yeah. And I really like to, to try to find just the, all the aspects I can. And for example, I mean, yes, uh, terrorist attacks or suicide. I mean, these are, of course, like terrible things, yeah. and and we look at them mainly as terrible things yeah. because we fear them, yeah. uh, obviously, and, yes. and and we should. <laughs> but uh, I, I think also everything also has another aspect to it. So if we always jump to the jump or jump on the oh this is this yeah. is this is bad or or we categorize everything as this is not good. And um, and we should not think of it. Yeah. Because everything also has, for example, like the the, the, the track I think you're referring yeah. to on, on this album Hiper, yes. the the that is called Sui. Yes. Uh, so Sui is it's also it's a word stem. It can also mean uh, of oneself or or okay. or his or hers sort of or themselves. Mm. Um, so it's it's also maybe as I'm, I also see the piece as a mirror. Uh, to a self, and and then because it can also it is also so it it, it can it is also a part of this word. Uh, right. So we yeah. see in Latin or suicide or uh, I, th I think. Uh, but coming back to yourself. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It can also and and then I mean also maybe you know the original meaning of the word isn't even that. Yeah. Terrible. Maybe it's something that we have made of it. Yeah. Uh, but but I thought I thought um, I thought of this. Um, you know that you know that when a person has suicidal thoughts or has like these dark thoughts, uh, I think they can often be triggered by a will to get away from everything. So in uh, that sense, like a long hibernation. Right. So I don't think people are necessarily thinking like. I mean, I think we have we have the whole aspect of this, so I don't want to like get into that. Yes, yes. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sure. uh, I, I think I think that uh, that it that that a, a lot of people can have uh, just a, a will to rest. So not necessarily like the thought of death yeah. and, and not being yeah. alive is even like one makes even like a little 
confusion between the two, like rest and death. Right. Um, so I thought that, that was a very interesting aspect. Yeah, uh, yeah it is. It's, yeah. Uh, and def there are especially so many painful things in our culture right now and in the world around us that that we maybe want to get away from. So your your approach of of going into the difficult things and and wanting to look at them, I think, is very valuable instead of escaping uh -huh. from from the difficult things. That there's something that we can learn from from the difficult aspects as well. Yeah, and well, maybe not even it. learn, yeah. or just uh, observe. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the piece that was premiered at your debut concert in Grundwieskirche um, last year, uh, which was yeah, a piece for instrumentalists and voice and uh, yeah, composed for the church itself mm -hmm. as a space, um, there was uh, uh, somehow something also about the natural world in that piece. Uh, uh, a, yeah, a, and that's something that, yeah, if one wants to make an Icelandic cliche, um, is often, yeah, in, in relation to Icelandic composers and creativity, that there's always this very strong awareness of nature. Yeah. Um, this volcano underneath you and the ice around you. Um, and that's something that was also somehow, uh, yeah, was expressed to some degree in that piece. Um, and. I think you've also been feeling that we face many challenges in terms of the natural world, uh, mm. perhaps in a similar way. Mm. Um, yeah, what was, uh, what, yeah, what, how, how did you come to, to that piece? Mm. Um, so, so actually, initially, I really wanted to write, the, when, when I applied, I remember when I, when I applied for the solo aesthetic, the, my idea for the, the debut was actually a piece for only flutes, but for um, like 50 or 60 flutes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't really doable yeah. at yeah. the time, <laughs> hopefully yeah. in the future. Yeah. Uh, but then I thought, you know, it would be really nice I, to also... It, I thought maybe to intervene the uh, because I have this collaboration project with Skuli Svarish or right. my friend, and uh, I I thought, you know, that perhaps what one should do for one's debut is to sort of maybe bring together your, your different different like aspects, yes. uh, I guess. So I thought maybe that was just the right thing to do. I felt, uh, and then I really wanted to. Work ha include some percussion, so the, you know, yeah. and the, uh, Neko is living there. Yes. Good friends of mine, and just really, yeah, right. I had been waiting to exactly. work with them, so yeah, it was sort of a given. Um, yeah. But yeah. I think, you know, because I was a bit, to be honest, surprised myself by when I both heard people's experience of the piece and uh, read reviews of the piece. Because I saw that, that there was a general sort of, um, you, you know, there was this identity, uh, you know, of Icelandic music right. uh, that seemed to be a very general, a, a very general uh, experience right. for yeah. for the, the listener. And I, uh, I, I am as I am always actually when I read something, you know, it's just a true Viking <laughs> piece or whatever. Uh, it, in a way. That seems problematic to me, uh, because I don't. I, I don't think one would say like, well, what would you what you say like? Oh, this sounds like a truly Chinese piece, or it sounds so American, or and like, what do we think? What, uh, do we have any uh, pre assumptions mm. of what that music might sound like and why? Yeah. Uh, so so I I thought. Uh, I, d I don't really have a pro I, like personally. It's more like of, of a of a general yeah. like. Uh, I can totally understand. That. Yeah, <laughs> because it's it, it maybe yeah. it's uh, you know not appropriate. Please <laughs> <laughs> stop doing that. <laughs> um, 
it's yeah. so easy though because uh, yeah. because of the name and uh, yeah as, as and Viter is it means yeah. it means like uh, it, uh, the same in Danish doesn't it like Viter uh, or, or what do you say like uh, like two uh, huge fields yeah. or um, yeah, I don't know. No, um, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I think, and it can also mean in Icelandic, it can also mean dimensions. And that was basically right. what I was uh, going for. So both, you know, the, just the landscape, like the literal landscape of the sound, which they were, where the church was very yes. much included. Yeah. It's a 15th it's very, performer. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very much a spatial piece. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you had to be there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, but I, I think um, maybe there was, because the flutes also when when you work with the flutes in a, in a bit of uh, because the, the way it was worked uh, with in in the piece was you know somewhat um, primitive way yeah where they were re very much combining their voices with the instrument yeah. so it was very much core you know yes. um, and 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 that is also of course something we relate relate to nature. Yeah. Because nothing has a truer, uh, has a more tr true core than, than nature itself. Yeah. So perhaps it's something, has something to do with that. And, and then I would understand, you know, because I, I you know, all, all of the time I, I get this, oh, are, you, are you inspired by volcanoes uh, and geysers? Or, uh, because I'm, I'm really, really not. <laughs> Sorry, Jay, I brought it up. <laughs> no, it's a good, it's a, it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. um, also, in the reviews, some of the reviews for that piece, uh, I was a little surprised that it was also seen as somewhat apocalyptic yeah. in its vision. Um, because I didn't, personally, I, I experienced it as quite positive. Uh, oh, I'm um, happy to hear. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know, what is your take on, um, do you see it as apocalyptic? No. No. It's more, it's nature. Um, I, I think it just, it just is. It just is. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and then, you know, of course I were, was very interested in, uh, and, and my goal was maybe to try, try to combine the different instruments into one voice. So yes. I was very, you know, occupied by like ideas of unison. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. Do you find it? Do you find it difficult to talk about music? I mean, you're talking about music, your music very well now, but uh, if I might, you know, when I ask you to to press more precisely say what a piece is about, do you, do you feel that it's it's better to just keep it on the level of sound and not and not get too precise with the words that one yeah. collects around it? Yeah, sometimes because you know, um, so. Uh, Sometimes you know when when you especially read re reviews, you're sometimes like, oh, okay, because you haven't really. Maybe, I don't really think that much. In terms of, in terms of words, <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah not I just I'm just thinking of my form and yeah. what I want to. I'm not really thinking about like a message or never. Mm -hmm. No, never. I'm never thinking about a message or something like. Or, like yeah. there's never like a, you know. So sometimes I'm very surprised, but I. I, I I am never like I'm offended yeah. or when I hear about people I, people's experience when they are saying oh I I went through like a tunnel or I went through the ocean or because I have I have people coming to me yes. uh, sometimes telling me this these visions mm. that they yeah and so there was something very visual often and yes. I am always <laughs> surprised <laughs> well, yeah but it's good that's you know it's just good that when you huh. for all of us to experience mm. something that. <laughs> <laughs> Gives us right. an adventure, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So, because you've taken quite a lot of care with the titles of the pieces, and uh, but often this kind of double layer of something that has a Latin element, but also could sound Icelandic or or is is either is Icelandic yeah. or very close to it. Yeah. Um, but that's almost more like a more poetic approach to uh, to language. Yeah, perhaps. The, um, yeah. I, th I think it's, you know, even more for myself to be able to, you know, do things well and, yeah. and thoroughly. Um, Does the title, do you start with the title? Most of the time. Yes, yeah. so that's a kind of fixed point that yeah. you can refer to for yourself. Yeah. That holds the thing together. Yeah. 
something I was also thinking about was your yeah, you're active as a double bass, double bassist, and often performing in your own works. Um, and it's a very big physical instrument. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so there's, there's also something about the physicality of the sound, um, and especially when it's extended with electronics that, um, yeah, that fits in well with this uh, sort of visceral, um, very textural approach that you have in your music. In, if, if one looks back to the score of Vape or also in Vidir, uh, there are a lot of graphically notated elements and someone can kind of understand how yeah, this grows out of your improvisational practice, um, but then combined with very precisely notated things, especially in Vape, for example, mm. there's a lot of detail mm. in the notation. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your background as a musician? How have these, in video, you collected all these elements, the improvisational and the notational? Mm. Um, how did, how did, how's, what's the path been to, mm. to reaching that point? Mm. Um, I, I think um, that, that it is, has something to do with, uh, with, uh, an interest to combine things into one, uh, and and the, this as I was talking about earlier, like this idea of uh, one instrument or like one sound, and uh, and then I, I thought it would be for it did, for example, to be good to include um, what would be the most like natural way to combine all those aspects. So I was thinking, you know, where. Uh, <clears throat> How can I create like a, a barrier or or like this slight transition from improvisation to notated music, and uh, how I could do it like uh, in a transparent manner to see if you know. So that there's an easy so flow. Yes, yeah, so exactly. Yeah. yeah. In your own musical background, did you start off as a a performer, or was it always as with some kind of composing or? Um, mm, yeah, I yeah, started with a, a violin. Yeah, I, I was played the violin for ten years. And then, and then I switched. And then the composing grew out of that. Uh, I think more like I switched to the double bass, and then you know I w and then I think I you know started quite late. It, it was like an idea I had that I wanted to. You know, I, I was like, oh, I, I would really like to write something, but I hadn't. I remember I was writing like when I started, when I was like five, uh, playing the violin. Then I was sometimes, sometimes writing notes, but I never showed it to anyone, and I yeah. never like thought oh, I'll do something uh, with this. <laughs> yeah. uh, not at all. Uh, so I think the, um, I didn't really start until I got in at the academy. Uh, of arts in, in Iceland, uh, which is like really incredible, really that yeah. they <laughs> they was very kind yeah. of, kind of them to take me in <laughs> because I didn't have any yeah. you know experience. I just had like uh, so I had an idea of what <laughs> that, I, that this was something I should do, and uh, yeah, so they gave me that opportunity. Please, they did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> and then you also spent some time in Italy. Uh... Uh, was that specifically studying composition, or was it? Yeah, yeah. I did, I did yeah. Uh, like one year of master in Italy, right. yeah. and then Copenhagen at the at the Royal Academy. Mm. Um, do you have any inkling or any idea of where things are headed in the future? You've just released your solo, your album, which is more or less a solo mm. piece, but now you're writing an orchestral piece again. Mm. Um, in very different ways of working. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't have any like mm, any vision of how things will be, or I'm I'm just happy, you know, the way things are now. But there is always, you know, a slight yeah. thought, you know, uh, back there that yeah, there might the end of this might be coming <laughs> because you feel yeah. that you know. 
you maybe feel that you're doing sort of the same or that you just don't have anything more to give or something like that. I think I, that's a, a common feeling amongst creative people. Yeah, I think I don't think I know any, I don't think I know anyone that doesn't uh, think that way. Yeah. So, you know, I'm always thinking, ah, oh, maybe three more yeah. years of this, but I, you know, then I think it's something and this is not something I'm doing because I have to. Yeah. I want to do it. So. Exactly, yeah. Um, if you weren't doing it, just as a, as a side question, what, what, <laughs> what else could you imagine? Um, just a, a lot of things, yeah. actually. <laughs> but probably something in visual arts. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or something, or even, or like uh, something with writing. Yeah. Uh, or something with math. When I was speaking with James, James Black recently, he also suddenly, uh, the reason why I bring it up is because he mentioned uh, that he also suddenly reached a point where he realized that he didn't have to just follow the traditional composer route, uh, uh, what's expected, uh, that he suddenly realized, oh, there were all kinds of things that he could do. And then he made the YouTube album. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that I think it seems to be, yeah, an interesting thing that one can take a step back from from the career that one seems to be very much in the middle of yeah and and contemplate other possibilities even if one does just more or less carry on mm -hmm. um within that thing but yeah poetry and words and and the visual i can completely see that as other expressions of of what you're busy with with your with Heber, you also talk about the visual aspect and, and the cover is also this kind of textured um, field, which which very much reflects um, which reflects what's going on in the music as well. Mm. You you talk about the visual aspects of that. Do you see? Uh, you talked about other people seeing images and telling his telling stories when they listen to your music, but do you? As you're composing, is it something that also has a an, an inner visual component? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, it I it depends on how um, how direct uh, you know it becomes. I think, uh, but there is always something there because I think for me, form the musical form is visual. I mean. If you if you don't, it kind of I mean even if it's linear, it's it's visual in a way. But uh, of course, when it becomes more abstract, you may, might might want to portray a a, a three dimensional form, or you know, because you 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 might be. Or I, I try to find ways if, to to make music into something more of a of a three D form. I mean, it's the not. Sculpture, the yes, sound, in the sound, sense. Sound. So, so, like with heat, but I yeah. think you know, I, you know, for a lot, a lot of my pieces, I, I see like before, as I, I, I fully start composing, I often have like ideas that are the form where there are like planets, like. Um, so with heat, but I think it's like this green, like soaking, like almost planet not like not fully round yes. but like a little bundle of uh, where you can like stick your hand like uh, yes. uh, and it's like with wet, wet moss and uh, dirt and yeah. this sque squishy thing so I, I have like uh, these sort of ideas for for mo most yeah most of my works and another thing that's very different from playing the double bass to writing an orchestral score is the, the notation. Mm. It's also like a very different kind of visual. Um, mm. uh, yeah, that you're occupied with something visual in, in, a, in a different way. And I was, being, was very curious about composers' relation to notation, uh, especially with someone like you, where you also spend a lot of time just playing, mm. um, improvising, and you have the way where you don't have um, specific notes to, to follow. Yeah. Uh, and then that shift from how that changes what you, yeah, how you relate to sound when, when you have traditional music notation mm. on um, mm. on five lines. Mm. 
Um, you know, it can be a very problematic relationship one has to to notation, and also because if if you know other people are playing your pieces, which is maybe you know most of, that's what it's like most of the time for, for composers, then you also need to find even though you don't relate much to the notation we have, then you of course have to find like this way where like this where it can be easily as easily understood as as possible right. for musicians. Yes. So you need to find a compromise. Uh, I th I feel that in, you know I'm m merging more and more these two sort of. It's becoming less and less. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there, are of, there are a lot of graphic elements. Exactly, and I think that really helps it. <laughs> yeah. uh, for me, and I think also when when I am playing music by uh, by others, if it has graphics. It helps me, so it really helps me understand uh, the the concept uh, of of the music. Right. Yeah. Notations almost returning to its beginnings, though. If I think back to sort of medieval notation, where you yeah. have shapes and things. But... Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. Um, the the piece for the. Danish National Vocal Ensemble that uh, that will be performed soon in a few weeks' time. Um, yeah, in relation to the dark themes that we we're talking about, this one has a, a very light theme, mm -hmm. uh, a, a nativity theme. Mm -hmm. It's called Nat, uh, as you explained, coming from the Latin uh, Natura. Mm. Um, and it also yeah, relates to the nativity, but also to the Danish word net, which is night. Um, and it's for the for the uh, a choral piece uh, with yourself playing as well. Mm. Um, yeah, could you tell us a little bit about about that piece and and how that came about? Yeah. Um, and what it's about? Yes. <laughs> So they they asked me to if I could if, if I was interested to to write a piece for the Christmas concert and they wanted the piece that could sort of serve as a bridge between pieces I guess and um, so they wanted something still and uh, something that could they they said something like that that they were looking for something that could um, portray the atmosphere of of. In like after after baby Jesus is born and the angels and all the uh, right. uh, party you know, has has gone back uh, home and there is this stillness right. and so so after the party yeah. <laughs> exactly uh, so yeah I tried to do that so they were I think they they were interested in something where. There is just you know new life in in nature sort of or yeah, yeah really something true. quite yeah. pure I would myself <clears throat> yeah you know and just I, that's what I self took from it but I mean myself took mm -hmm. from it but I don't know yeah and then you talk about that there's a little twist to this uh, this stillness and. Uh, or is that giving away too much? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, and I think I, it is actually, you know, it was very strange for me to write a piece that was should be like at so, so much ease. Um, but I think the piece is still um, not, it's not conflicting in any sense, I would say, like, although it's maybe a bit high in, in the register for some of the singers, and so in that sense it might be a bit for them, but um, I, th I think it, 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 it has just, I just wanted to work with like a rich texture, even though it's like very much the same, it's very, very, it's very lively and um, all over the place, sort of, although it's in this very, very narrow frame. A lot of life within the stillness, mm. within the setting. Yeah, yeah. And then your double double bass mm -hmm. joining in. Yeah. Also high. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Great, Bar. Thank you very much for just dive into uh, yeah all kinds of aspects around your pieces and telling us a little bit about them. And we look forward to the performance. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>